This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. She is a 8-year-old girl who has had this penetrating injury with a pencil at her school. This has happened about 5 uh, hours from the time of presentation and uh, the lead of the pencil has broken and got stuck inside the eye. The tip of it is seen here but it has traversed across the stroma into the antechamber and is probably touching the iris as well but which is not clearly seen. The child is not so cooperative for examination in the sit lamp but I could be certain that the pencil lead was long enough and probably would be traversing the entire depth of the antechamber. So that was my assumption and obviously this needed to be removed at the earliest and we took her for surgery. IV sedation was given, the patient was quite cooperative. Bosis abstinence injection of uh, 1 ml of lignocaine is being given now. In all these intracorneal and intracameral foreign bodies which we see, these sharp objects of foreign bodies would have created a track inside the cornea and the track would be very very tight and it would be very difficult for us to just go ahead and grasp the foreign body and pull it out. That won't work. The technique to remove such foreign bodies would be to first widen the track or the tunnel which has been created by this foreign body. So what I'm doing here is using a 26 number needle, I'm scraping around the foreign body, scraping at the corneal tissue just to widen the intracorneal tunnel which has been created and this is done all around the foreign body. So the goal is to just widen the entry track which has been created, just want to widen it so that the foreign body which is stuck inside this track becomes a little loose. So it's important not to pull the foreign body until the track is sufficiently widened enough. Otherwise, sometimes if we end up pulling it without widening the entry track, the chances of breaking the foreign body are going to be very high. That's the reason why I'm just creating or widening the intracorneal tunnel. I'm just holding at this partial thickness corneal flap which gives me enough stability to keep on enlarging the intracorneal tunnel around this pencil lead. As I'm trying to scrape the corneal tissue, I'm noticing the streak hypopion which is there at the bottom which was not very evident at the slit lamp because the child was not very cooperative for examination but we can see that this is streak hypopion and this is a cause for concern. I'm hoping that it's not infection and it's just a sterile uveitic uh, sort of a reaction but you never know. Once I'm certain that uh, it's reasonably loose, that's the time when I go back and get my forceps and have a firm grip on it and then pull it out. And lo and behold, the foreign body comes out and it's quite a long one, approximately maybe about 3 to 4 millimeters. Once the foreign body is out, I'm trying to scrape out or flush out some of the lead debris which is stuck onto the corneal stroma and it's extremely difficult for us to wash away or remove this, the lead particles sticking onto the cornea. The corneal wound is sutured using a tenovicryl. It is a self-absorbing suture. I'm making a paracentesis. I just want to irrigate out some of the possible toxins which have gone inside. And once I've done that, I'm using intracameral cefuroxime as an antibiotic. That's it. Time to close and let's see how things turn out on the next day. This is the first post-op day. The chamber is very well formed, but the hypopion still persists. Dilated fundus examination does not reveal any much of a vitreous inflammation and I could see the optic disc and retina all right so I'm hoping that she will recover soon. 
The next day, the cornea is much more clearer, but the hypopion still persists. The patient is also started on topical steroids along with the topical antibiotics. And by day 5, the hypopion has disappeared, the cornea is clear and the fundus evaluation was done and it was normal. So thankfully, the patient did very well and this was a small case which I just wanted to share about managing an uh, intracorneal and intracameral foreign body. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.